Colorado Springs. Nearly 500,000 people. Olympic City, USA. Garden of the Gods. Pikes Peak. It's a growing city. Our local government has a lot of employees. What exactly do they do? How does it impact my life? This is where you find out. Behind the Springs, an inside look at your local government. Thank you for listening today. I'm looking forward to another great conversation with Dr. Johnson, who is the medical director of El Paso County Public Health. Dr. Johnson, thanks for being with us again. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We're really happy to have you. And um, we're obviously going to talk about COVID and the COVID-19 vaccine today. Um, But first, I know I always do this to you, but I kind of want to kind of general update from you. Um, You have your finger on the pulse. How are things going? How are you all doing at El Paso County Public Health? What do you think the status update is? So I think that there is some really good news, particularly on the vaccine front. We've yes. seen some stabilization of that supply chain, right? So we are getting consistent doses from Pfizer and Moderna that um, enable us to consistently get those vaccines out. We've opened up vaccine for uh, the general population. So anyone who is 16 and 17 can get that Pfizer dose and 18 and older can get any one of the three vaccines that are available. As far as our COVID numbers, we had been pretty stable through February and most of March, but the last couple of weeks we're starting to see some uptick in those numbers, which just remind us, uh, is a good reminder for us that we are, while we see the light at the end of the tunnel and we are nearing the end of this pandemic, we are not there yet. And so we really do need to stay the course and continue those layered preventive public health measures, wearing your mask and keeping your group small, um, and then most importantly, adding the vaccine so that we can get to that herd immunity and really begin to open our economy, our community robustly. I know people thrive. People don't want you to say that. They want you to say it's over, I know. <laughs> don't they? There's, I, can't I you can't. just speak it over? Yeah, I can't wait for the day that I get to say that, yes. that we really are beyond it and, and can just deal with it. Um, you know, as a more routine matter, right? We're just not quite there. I know this home stretch <laughs> is hard, isn't the it? The home stretch is really hard, and I've been thinking about this. It's like swimming, right? We've been swimming in the ocean. You're getting really tired, and you can see the beach. But if you stop your swimming motion before your feet can touch the ground, you're, you're in still trouble. Gonna sink, right? Right. So we've got a little ways to swim yet. Yes, and people want um, somebody to throw. A, uh, you know, like a just, rescue in there for yeah, them or just pick them the up and throw them in the boat. On a know? rope and pull me in. I mean, please. It is tempting <laughs> to say that. So it yes. is It is difficult. It is hard, it is. but it's, it's so important. Yeah. I mean, we have done so much work, right? And the community has done really, really well. So to the um, need to capitalize on all that work and finish well so that we can avoid you know, one last wave that is really um, in any way crippling to us is so essential. So the remember, it is that cumulative effect of our individual choices that really create community health. That's for sure. And back to the good news of the vaccine. Yes. Um, so everyone um, 16 and older, like you said, 16 and 17, um, Pfizer, and then 18 and older have their choice of vaccine. Um, where can they? Where can people find out more? Because that is the big question we're hearing from people. What? Where's the best place for me to go to sign up? So the most centralized and robust data source is going to be at ElPasoCountyHealth.org. Um, we have a dashboard there that will give you the information on COVID that we've been following all along. But we also have um, a dashboard that you can click on that gives you that same sort of um, slide deck that you can go through on the vaccine. And there is an interactive map where you can hover over your zip code and it'll tell you who is a provider in that area that um, you can connect with to get the vaccine. And then there's also a full um, listing of our providers and how you can contact them and get connected with your vaccine as far as doing it on the internet or with a phone number. And a secondary place you can call is 211 and they can help you walk through that as well. Right, if you're not comfortable going online. Um, Also, we have um, a text option for people. um, You can just text the word vaccine in English or vacuna in Spanish 
to 667-873. So that's another option. A lot of options for people. Yes. And I like that you brought up the, um, you know, the map because we want, it's important to make it convenient for people to quick, easy, convenient. Um, yeah, that's access important. to the vaccine is um, one of our, we just want to get rid of that barrier that you would have to travel far or that it could, you know, get complicated. And um, we have a vaccine consortium here in El Paso County, which is really exciting. It brings in our, you know, hospital systems, our primary care providers, the pharmacies. And so we have over 98 locations within the county where you can go and get a vaccine. And in addition to that, you know, we have added um, some pop-up clinics that will come on certain weekends in certain locations that may um, have a special request or may have less access than others to assure that we're giving opportunity to everyone to get the vaccine. In every part of the city. So yes. if you're thinking, oh, it's it's just not convenient enough for me, well, there, we've, we've checked that <laughs> box off the... Yeah, convenience yes. is not going to be an excuse anymore. Right, but there are <laughs> other people that have concerns about the vaccine. I feel like a lot of people I've spoken with are either saying, I can't wait to get the vaccine or I'm not going to get the vaccine. It's sort of one extreme or the other. Can you talk about why there's some hesitancy out there and what you're hearing? Yeah, and I think that with anything that is new, there are those early adopters, right? So those who just go, absolutely, I will jump on board and get that. And um, and then there are those who are going to wait to see how those early adopters fare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there are the people who are tend to be more cautious. Um, and I think that a lot of the questions have to do with uh, development of the vaccine. Is it safe? If is, is it efficacious? It occurred, you know, so rapidly. It was unprecedented. And then is it worth it for me to, you know, oh, is it worthwhile? Yeah. People have said that too. I won't get that sick. And no, and why so, is it worthwhile? So first and foremost, the development of the vaccine happened as rapidly as it did because of the financing of it and because there was a call across the globe to bring together the best minds in collaboration to look at the different avenues in which we could develop a vaccine effectively, efficiently, and safely. And because of those financial barriers having been removed, because of the collaboration and that kind of coordination, uh, we do have a safe and efficacious vaccine. So that would be the first, you know, myth to dispel. Dispel. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, and remind me, what was it you? Well, a, a lot of people are just saying, "Is it worthwhile for oh, me to get it?" Because yes. I won't get that that sick, and I am young and healthy, and um, yeah. So I would say that um, to that, there are several things uh, about that that are unfortunately incorrect. One is that we are seeing that um, as we have vaccinated those 70 and older who were targeted early um, because of their risk of a more severe infection or fatality, we're seeing that they are not getting sick. So the vaccine is effective and it's making a big impact on- On that demographic. On that yes. demographic. Okay. But as that demographic is doing better, we're seeing 59 and younger. As we see some increasing cases, they are accounting for the majority of those and they still are being hospitalized um, and having some long-term sequelae. We've talked about the fact that you can have some ongoing brain fog, some long hauler syndrome with shortness of breath and some other issues. And so um, that's what you're avoiding. That is what you're avoiding. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we are doing when we get vaccinated is not only caring for ourselves, it's not just about, I mean, vaccines are not just for the person who's vaccinated. They're for your friends, your family, they're for the community. It really is, again, uh, that principle of layered public health prevention is the cumulative effect of individual choices to have that community impact. And it, this is our strongest tool. And so again, just like wearing a mask, we need um, our community to join us in this effort. And and again, this is that time where, and I feel like you and I sound a little like a broken record because we say this each time we meet, <laughs> yes. um, but it, it becomes 
um, ever more important to really rely on good sources of information absolutely. when it comes to researching the vaccine, which everyone should absolutely do. Um, researching the different kinds of vaccines um, and and their side effects and so forth, but you know, making sure you're getting that information from a reliable source. Absolutely, there's so many different opinions yes. and and they are opinions and opinions yes they are opinions and myths that are circulating it is essential that you get your information from reliable sources that you understand you know the science behind this and why it is safe and efficacious and and that you um, really have that good education so that you can feel comfortable getting the vaccine but also that you have the understanding that brings that comfort to you Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned El Paso County Health.org, which is a great resource and can and can guide you in different directions um, to find out more based on what you would like to know. So what are some of the common questions that your department is hearing? Is it obviously is the vaccine safe? And then is it also how long do I have to wear a mask or what are some other big questions you're hearing? Yeah, so I think when it's Obviously, the other one is like, do I still have to wear a mask if I've been vaccinated? And the answer would be we would ask you to definitely in public because we still have yet to reach that herd immunity. So it while the vaccine helps prevent you from getting ill, you there is the pressure if you're encountering a lot of other people um, who may be carrying the virus, but also that you don't want to have any opportunity for spreading it to someone who has not been vaccinated. Right. And so we okay. just keep, again, those layered um, preventive measures in place until we have that herd immunity. And you wouldn't happen to have a magic date for that, right? <laughs> no, but you know what? We're actually beginning to hear. <laughs> okay. I mean, because of where we're at. And again, this is a more good news on that vaccine front. We yes. have about one in three individuals having received at least one vaccine in, in Colorado Springs and with the supply that is now consistently coming in and the uptake, if we can keep this going forward, getting everybody to step into line and get their vaccine, we could be reaching some of that um, herd immunity and end of May and then into the summer, but it is That's on great. the horizon. Yes, and but it's all about keeping that momentum going. It is and about keeping the momentum going and, and keeping everybody, you know, getting into the queue, getting your vaccine at your earliest convenience. Um, that's what I was going to ask you is kind of um, what happens next. And I mean, you're talking about end of May, uh, you know, in terms of no masks and, and truly returning to normal. You know, what's the timeline you see for for our area and then also bigger picture, you know, uh, for people who are saying, when can I oh, travel man. or what in yeah, terms of the country? So... I know it's hard to make that prediction, but. Well, and there's so many variable yes. factors, right? Yes. I mean, so, so many of those questions really have more of an individual answer when you start talking about, should I travel? Uh, it depends on where you're traveling. Right. Are, are you going someplace where they are vaccinated? Are you going to visit somebody who's high risk? Um, so you have to be case by case. And, yeah. And, so, I mean, you have to yeah. think through some of those factors. Um, I think we're going to be doing that over the next several months to potentially longer as we recognize this is a global pandemic. And so we don't want to, you know, have you know, a vaccinated population and then travel and bring something back that has had a chance to change because, you know, the whole globe is needing to get Right. Vaccinated. And we are hearing of these new variants. and Yeah. And that's another good reason to get vaccinated is when we stop the spread, we don't allow the vaccine to find the next host to kind of work and evolve into a sweet spot where it... Um, is another mutation that creates more challenges for us. And that's how that happens, right? Yeah. It's just through spread, right? It yes. is. It's through spread and, and having these um, infections that are more severe where the viral load just gives an increased opportunity for the virus to evolve. I know at the beginning you kind of said, you know, twofold. You're feeling optimistic because of the vaccine, a little concerned because those numbers are going up. 
Um, are, are you still hopeful? How are you feeling, you know, going into the next few months? Oh, well, I, I'm by nature pretty optimistic <laughs> anyway. Wow, cautious, right? Realistic right. optimism. I, I think that we are well poised to do well, but it is a race. And so if we can maintain this momentum and, you know, with, again, realistic optimism and embracing the opportunities that we do have for, you know, interacting with others and opening our economy, but doing so, continuing those layered precautions. I mean, we've got to keep wearing our mask when we're out in public until, you know, we get to that herd immunity. I think we are doing really well and poised for success. Right. Oh, that's really good news. And keep washing your hands forever. Yes, Yes. absolutely. (laughs) Forever and ever. Um, Any other thoughts or advice that you want to share with people? Um, I I know we mentioned getting accurate information. um, And then, you know, if people have specific questions about the vaccine and their own situation or their own risk factors, I mean, they really should talk with their doctor, right? Absolutely. And I mean, there are a lot of you know, medical conditions uh, or factors that come into play. And, you know, individuals have a lot of questions for the most part. The answer really is get your vaccine. It is so much better to mount some immune response to really protect yourself from getting the virus. The virus, um, I mean, when we get our vaccine, we're just giving a photocopy of the enemy to our immune system so that it can recognize that enemy and say, you shall not pass, right? Right. When we get the virus itself, it actually is causing an illness and it can affect our cells and our organs. And long term sometimes. And long term sometimes. So, um, but if you're questioning that Absolutely. Talk to your own physician. And I'm just saying, if you feel the need to go beyond just the research and really talk to a medical professional, your doctor's a great source. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us and keeping us updated. It's so important. And we really appreciate your time. And we want to encourage everyone to follow City of COS and El Paso County Public Health on social media. Um, Their websites are great tools. Um, Just, you know, wherever you tend to get your information, I think you can find those two sources and they're great sources for you. So thanks for listening to Behind the Springs.